Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV is proudly supported by Adventure Spec in England, Rally Raid Products, Giant Loop in the United States, and Adventure Moto in Australia. There's no way in the world you would be doing this on a standard BMW G310 GS. Rally Raid products have laid it on the line to take this road-oriented Beamer and transform it into a highly capable adventure mount that punches well above its weight. They've headed to Australia to test their bikes in the gruelling APC Motorcycle Rally. This video will take you through the bike build, explain in detail the thinking behind the modifications to the bike, and then we'll head out on a shakedown ride to see for ourselves what these bikes can do in the hands of Amy Harburg, Australian BMW Ambassador, and Adam Mitchinson of Rally Raid Products. Finally, we'll spend a couple of hours in the garage with Adam and Amy before they head off to tackle the gruelling APC rally, the ultimate test for these bikes. Here I am. Guys, all this is going to put on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's for holding your GPS. That's... Ah, that's what we need, a bit better suspension. What do you reckon? Does it need better suspension? That's a bit different. <laughs> oh, it's in a nice white box. <laughs> that's a bit different. <laughs> the two bikes shown on this video are currently the only completely fitted out bikes in the world and as you'll see some of the parts are still in the research and development stage. Well I got a tattoo on my forehead saying don't look back, black hair goes my heart, I don't care about that, broke two mirrors just trying to let go my hair. I'm Adam Mitchinson from Rally Raid Products. Uh, we're out on a Rally Raid G310 GS. We're going to be running it through the APC Rally with our pre-development parts we've, we've created. Um, and we're hoping to use this as an opportunity to develop and improve the parts that we've already made um, for the future to release them in, on the market. We've really thrown everything at it to make a cracking adventure bike from upgraded suspension, wire wheels, bash plate and other accessories. For the last couple of days we've been building both the bikes, fitting all the Rally Raid parts and the Conti TKC80s onto the bikes. Uh, we're finished now, thankfully. So we're going to be heading out uh, on Shakedown in two days. We're going to be doing a 200k loop, hitting up some single trail, twin trail, featuring rocks, roots, some loose dirt, see what we can find on the bikes. Loose nuts, bolts, anything that we need to change. 
can't wait to actually take this bike out. Um, you know, we rode this bike standard and we put it through its paces. Now with all the up-spec modifications that we've made to it, I really can't wait to actually take this bike out and see how it performs now. Yeah. Hey Greg, come on over. What's up, mate? I just want to take a minute to say thank you for all the hard work that you've done. Everybody, this is Greg Yeager from ADV Works. He's been around the adventure riding scene in Australia for many years and actually a bit of a legend. He's been working incredibly hard on these bikes for us for the last few days. No worries, Doc. I yeah. just want to say a big thanks also from Rally Road Products for the amount of work you've no this project. Oh. Um, it's great. It's easy, bolt together, um, just follow the instructions and just go straight through, not a problem at all. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it's been an interesting build to take them from, from like what they were, the wire wheels, bowl the suspension in, get them set up. They're a good looking little bike. There's been a lot of well made parts, well thought through stuff, but I'm telling you, I just had a look through your rally notes and you guys have your, have your work cut out for you. They'll be uh, up early and, and into it. The BMW G310GS is complete, the rally raid version of that. Um, and you're three days out from the APC rally. What are you thinking about? At the moment, we're just looking towards shakedown tomorrow, make sure the development parts we've made for this are ready for the rally. We're really going to try and put it through everything we can during the rally, um, just to give it the biggest test that we can. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a hard ride, covering over 5,000 kilometres on these small bikes. So we're just looking to find any sort of um, shortfalls in our own products and that of the bike itself. Yeah, so it's an interesting build. I mean, Amy Harburg and I reviewed the standard model of this, and yeah. at a base level, it seems like a really good handling bike. It was fun to ride. It's a willing engine. Are they the reasons behind why you actually selected this for all the Rally Raid products development? Yeah, I mean, initially the bike proved itself um, as a great entry-level bike for many riders. It's got a manageable weight, good seat height. Um, like I said, it's sort of mid-range power, so it doesn't put any uh, new riders off. And it's just got a good fundamental design that we're looking to move forward into an all-round adventure bike. Yeah, I, I didn't have, um, you know, the amount of fun I had on this bike was just amazing. It was great. The low seat height, you know, I'm a, an experienced adventure rider, but I found the bike really capable. I mean, you can really have some fun on these bikes um, because of their size. They really inspire confidence, not just in new riders, but also in experience, experienced riders like yourself. Um, you can still really give yourself a test on one of these. Well, it was amazing that day we took the bikes over to ADV Works uh, with Greg Yeager and he br brings in this forklift and has this mighty great big box of parts to put on this. I mean, I go through this uh, bike and there's so many improvements, aren't there? What are, what are the highlights? I mean, we'll go through them in sequence later on, but what do you see as the highlights of the bike in terms of really raising the the level of, of handling of this bike? I mean, initially some of the uh, basic checkbox of adventure bike, it's the suspension that we've worked very heavily with Tractive from Holland on, we're very happy with that. Um, our own heavy duty spoked wheels, which we've done our hubs ourselves, laced by SM Pro. And of course you've got your controls like your rental fat bars, our own rally road risers for increased um, rise in your handlebars. It's um, great for adventure riding and also our bash plate protection and soft lug tracks. From my perspective, I couldn't believe it. You know, we're putting a remote reservoir shock on the rear of this bike. I watched as Greg put a, a stronger spring in the front end and, you know, the spoke wheels are just a must in Australian uh, riding conditions. That's yeah. it. In terms of the suspension, you're taking something else, quite a basic shock, and we've gone from that to a attractive shock which has got remote preload adjustment, you've got high speed, low speed compression dampening and that's all accessible right from the bike as it stands there so when you're on the move very easy to get to and uh, keep the bike maintained for what you're riding at the time. In terms of the front end that's had a sort of complete rework because of the design of the forks on this lightweight bike it's very important that you've got the right suspension to get you to the terrain that you want. Yeah, and I love the bash plate that's like really um, solidly designed and you know if you get hooked up on that rock you're not going to lose your sump are you? Oh definitely, and on a bike that you're trying to get from A to B on over long distances, if you lose your sump or you lose your oil that's your game over and what we're about is trying to get people where they want to go and enjoy it at the same time. So Adam, one of the things I really liked about the bash plate was at the top of it you've integrated radiator protection which is quite an unusual thing in the in the one component normally it's two separate uh, components and you've done the one and it's really innovative and creative that's it ideally we're looking to trim down the amount of products that customers obviously have to fit to the bike themselves and with a one piece unit you've got a higher tensile strength over the whole front end of the bike 
Um, in all situations, that's just good for the design, good for the bike, and obviously good for the rider. Yeah, no, it was great. So I've talked about the big stuff, the suspension, the spoke wheels, the bash plate, but it's the little stuff that also really makes a difference. Just go over some of the, the stuff that dramatically improves um, rider experience and rider comfort. Okay, so starting from the front, we've obviously gone with an extended screen. Um, the screen that came on the BMW initially was very low, not really suitable for adventure use. Uh, coming back from that, we've got our fat bar risers, rental fat bars, just open the front end of the bike, give you a bit more room, and gives the bike a, an overall larger feel without actually being any larger. Um, obviously, we've got our bark busters on there. Good Aussie product. Amazing, you can't fault them. And we've got your USB 12 volt sockets for charging your, your GPS, charging your phones, and just keeping you going on the long distance running. Yeah, and I noticed you've also got a USB socket there as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a dual USB socket, so you can have two things on the go at once. It's not going to kill your bike, and it's almost essential for modern day riding. So in preliminary testing of the bike, when it was standard, we were getting, I don't know, around two, 280 kilometres to the tank. It's about 10.5 litre tank or something like that. Um, so you've gone with a rotor pack at the, at the back, tell us a little bit about that. We've gone for the rotor packs on the rear, it's a US made product and uh, we really like these for any situation, any bike they can go on there. So that's fitted onto our rally raid rear rack for the bike, um, just locks on there, super easy. You don't have to worry about external fuel tanks, fuel bladders, just pop on and off and off you go. So Adam, we've just about gone right over the bike, I've got a feeling we've missed a few things. Aha. Uh -huh. A headlight protector and I forgot there's also a radiator guard as well isn't there to stop the, the to stop the radiator from getting punctured. Yeah that's it. Um, I mean in, in adventure riding a headlight shield is almost essential. You lose your headlight your ride's over and we just can't let that happen to our customers. So Adam in terms of navigation what have you gone for? Uh, for this ride I've gone for the Montana 680T. It's a great little GPS system and big improvements on the last sort of models. You can get topographic maps and the memory size has been increased so much. For example, this APC rally, it's over 5,000 kilometres and it uses none of the memory. Yeah. So, uh, shakedown tomorrow. I'm taking you out to Colnura. We're going to do some single trails, some probably with this uh, weather, probably some greasy twin trail. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how you and Amy Harburg ride the bikes. And I think tomorrow you'll find enjoyable. So I'm looking forward to getting out there with you. Yeah, I think we're going to see a great range of different terrain, especially with the weather recently. We're going to have dry, greasy, rocks, a bit of everything. So it's almost the perfect sort of testing situation for these bikes. taking Adam and Amy to my favourite adventure motorcycle test site on the central coast of New South Wales. A very special location where I can easily find trails to take these little bikes way beyond their design specifications. My plan is to ease them into the day with an entree of some non-technical trails before heading to a small rock ledge to test the new suspension. This was one of the greatest weaknesses of the standard bike and shooting the new tractive rear shock and the stronger fork spring with internal fork modifications in slow motion will quickly highlight the improvements in the suspension for all to see. There is no way in the world Adam could lift off this small rock ledge with standard suspension without severely bottoming out on landing. It was pretty clear the suspension modifications had made a huge difference to the standard bike and it was time to test it a little harder. Now for those that don't like music accompanying engine noise, the remainder of the video is a chance to get to know and love the unique sound of this bike doing its job.
bloody slippery little hill climb this. Yeah, just sit right over the back seat and just paddle with your legs. I'd say you're probably better off rolling back to there and giving it a go from that. Good teamwork here, boys and girls. Uh, turn to your left. Turn my left. Turn to your left, yeah. Keep coming back. That's it. Come in, keep coming. Keep coming. It's all right, you gave it a go, eh? It's very <laughs> I guess that's teamwork. That's wow. teamwork, it's excellent. Tricky little hill climb, what are you thinking about the 310 now? I mean, it hooks up nice, you've got a lot of good traction there. Uh, you just got to keep the revs high and really keep the momentum going, especially at the bottom of climbs. But in terms of weight and management, it's, uh, it's like nothing else eventual-wise. Now, Amy, I don't see you get into trouble on hills very often, <laughs> but you did then, and all of us do. A little bit different if you're on a 1200 then. Yeah, look, if I was on the 1200, that would be quite a difficult situation to get out of. But with the 310, it was really easy to do a hill recovery and roll that back down and start again. And then as we saw, you know, I got caught up again towards the top um, and the bike actually provided enough drive and momentum to actually get traction and drive off. Um, so pretty impressive actually for a little bike. Amy and Adam, two days out before the APC, we've had our shakedown. Amy, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty confident about the little bike. I think it's going to suit the conditions really well, um, and I think it'll actually take everything we're going to throw at it over the next few, day, few weeks. How have you found the power of the bike and the handling? Look, with the new suspension, I think the bike handles really well. It's quite confidence-inspiring in a lot of the more technical areas. Um, it hooks up really well. Um, so yeah, it handles really well. Oh, that's good. So you're giving it the tick of approval? Absolutely. Yeah, so because what you're going to do is after you've ridden the APC, you're going to bundle this bike up, head to Mongolia, go halfway across the world to London. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, it gets shipped out only a week and a half after the APC. Yeah. Lands in Vladivostok. From there, I ride around to Mongolia. Um, spend a bit of time in Mongolia with the GS Trophy. And then from there, head across Mongolia and on to Europe. Wow. That's going to be a big trip. It is. I'm looking forward to it. So, Adam, how have you found it today, the, the setup with the bike? I mean, the bike gives it everything it's, it's got. It's such a willing little machine, um, especially in terms of handling now that we've obviously reworked it. But not just that, but the engine also. The 310 is not something to be sniffed at. Yeah, I noticed you even on the highway today, you know, you're just cruising on around 110 and it didn't seem to worry it at all. No, it took it in its stride perfectly, um, which is something that's quite impressive about a bike that small. Highway use isn't something that people usually think for, but it does it. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, one minute you're on, on freeway, uh, the next minute you're um, jumping up some rock ledges, um, taking on a, a fairly uh, steep uh, hill section, and, you know, the bike's done well. Yeah, and I think that's something that a real adventure bike needs to be able to do in all, in all senses of the terrain. Yeah. I think a lot of people will benefit from the lower seat height and that weight. I mean, if you were, this is an entry level bike for adventure riding and, um, you know, it just really fits that niche. But having said that, I mean, I rode it in the unmodified form and I thought it was just an excellent standard bike that you rode out, out of the shop. Yeah, definitely. We picked up the first one in the UK at Rally Road Products and it ticked all our boxes and uh, that's kind of the catalyst for the project. It is, isn't it? I mean, it was just such a, at a base level, drive it out just a fantastic little bike and now you've done these modifications and it's it's just so good isn't it's it? It's turned it into something far more capable than we imagined and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing just how, how far it will go. 
I wish you the best of luck in the APC rally. It's a gruelling rally, um, you know, an average of 550 k's a day I think you've got to pump out. Uh, and we'll all be watching with interest to see how these little BMWs go. Yeah, we're going to be pushing really hard to get these home. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. All right, well done, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on here? I mean, here we have two of the only Rally Raid 350s in the world in my garage. I feel pretty privileged. Here's my APC riders. Okay, Adam, where are you up to with your fit out? Uh, I mean, we're nearly there today. Had a really good day on shakedown yesterday. A few last minute changes to the bikes. Just small stuff like levers. Um, just in what we need to really make ourselves comfortable on the bikes for the rally. Uh, but I mean, there's not much left to do on them now. It's all go towards the starting line of the rally. And Amy, what do you've got to do? Um, we've got to fit some luggage racks and put the luggage, so the giant loop luggage has to go on the bikes. Um, and pretty much pack and get ready to go tomorrow. There's the racks. Well, we should have dinner. I should start cooking dinner. Hang on, because I'll you're yeah, going to have a late cooking. night, yeah. I'd suggest. Yeah. Oh, it's it's one, it? Half past ten at night. Adam and Amy are still going. We have empty... Giant loop, great basins. We've got a half full tank bag. And this bike, oh, look at this bike. Oh, it's got nothing, it's got a towel. Thank you, Harold, from Giant Loop for supporting us again and again and again on the adventures that we do. People like you make sure that we keep motivated to keep coming back to this great sport we love. Great basin saddlebag is on my trailer. There's a pile of crap here. I thought we were putting it all are, they gonna get to, are they going to get to bed by 12? Adam, are you going to get to bed by 12? Mm. Look at them here. They're beavering away. Quarter to 12. There they are. Little shiny munchkins. <laughs> so this looks like an interesting toolkit. Not too heavy. Not too light. I would suggest just right. So uh, after completing our shakedown run yesterday, we've discovered some small sort of faults in the bike's design. Um, one of them being the rear brake pedal is just a slightly too low. When you're up on the pegs and you really want to just feather the rear brake, you've got to put your weight a little bit more forward. So we're looking to uh, rise the lever of the rear brake pedal to leave you in a more neutral position. And this information has already gone back to Rally Raid and we'll be working on that shortly. So initially the uh, headlight protectors work great. After a few hours in the kind of the rougher stuff, the vibrations eventually work them loose. Um, so it's something we're definitely going to look at in the future and work alongside power bronze to see if we can find a, an alternative way to keep them a bit more secure in the rough stuff. So here you can see where you're going to be quite close to the back of your boot. Um, for now we're going to use an asbestos wrap held on by steel cable ties but uh, the information has gone back to Scorpion Exhaust in the UK and they're going to work on developing a short guard for us um, just to keep your boots in good condition. So one of the best things about Shakedown is uh, allowing us to see the issues we've got with the bike. One of the main issues we came across was the engine guard here. Um, initially, not quite enough protection in front of the oil filter, so it's something we're going to look at. Um, people are working on that back in the UK as we speak at the moment. What's clear to us is that we obviously need more protection for the oil filter here. Using a guard similar to this, uh, coming the full height of the engine guard is our best option. We're going to send this back to the UK and see what we can do. So just a tip for those looking to pick up the standard G310GS before you take it out on any rough trails, you want to make sure that you've got your nylocks in your cockpit support bolt um, after just a few hours on the trails as actually vibrated loose that came off the bike. I think we'd be proud of Adam and Amy, they're packing for going light, going far, going fast. By the looks of this. Harold, this is a new invention you've put on your dry pods, that's excellent. How and squeeze all the air out. That? Hey? Gotta makes, be happy with that. Makes doing it up really easy. And then yeah, just squeeze the air out. Look at this for a nice package. What a nice sausage. Nice sausage. So Adam, you're testing out that linesman jacket from Adventure Spec? Yeah, really nice. Nice and light. Keeps you cool. Uh, doesn't take too much energy from you. It's a nice light trail jacket. It's got a, quite an English tweed sort of look about it, my friend. Yeah, I had to represent coming over here. I had to represent? That's a, the English gentleman in the countryside of Australia on the APC rally. Keep it classy. Five, six pound key, six pound key.
So it's T minus two hours and counting. Is that when kick out time is day? Yeah, you're out. I'll tell you what, I expected you gone before now. It's now half past two. You need to be stopping the faffing about getting into it. You know, Adam, this is the first time I've seen a prog horn strap used for something like that. Look at that. And now he's got his little tool kit and towel. Ew. <laughs> so Adam's listening to my advice which is put all the heavy stuff low and central so in the tool kit so when you reach down in here now you've got down where you might hit your leg just here is a um, one of the tubes a tire tube and then he's got his toolbox or tool kit behind that I think that's the best way to go and put the other kit on the other side other kit the other heaviest bit of your equipment down on the other side, low and as far forward as you can get it. And again, it's lined with a tire tube just at the front here. I just think that's a good thing to do, just in case your leg gets knocked backwards towards the bike. I love this roll top, Amy. It's working pretty easily, certainly making the job easy. Yeah. Look how neat it rolls down. Yeah, yeah. And then simply clip. Yeah. yeah. I'm liking that, Harold. That's a great improvement on your great basin design. Excellent. Well done, my friend. What have we got here? The... It's funny, you know, he's halfway across the world and he keeps throwing these wonderful, innovative gifts at us. Like, this is brilliant, this new great basin. It is. Now, remember... Ma'am, you're still going to have another Tillamook, Tillamook bag on there, aren't you? Or you're not? Or you got it, you got it all in there? I got it all in there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't uh, need a roll bag on top either. Wow. You are both going light, going far, going fast. I know. I kind of feel like or I don't have enough. Bad. <laughs> not having enough clothes. You've surprised me for a week away. I couldn't pack that tight for a week away. Really? No. I'm going to get Sonia to do it for you, Dave. Yeah. Pack light for you. Goodness me. Oh, I the shoes, we forgot the shoes. <laughs> Gotta put my shoes in the bag. All right. It's kind of hard to remember when you're actually wearing them. I like know. <laughs> I've done that 50 times. Anyway. In they go. Good thing it's easy. Yeah, it is. It just rolls so quickly uh, and effectively. Uh, just a reminder, uh, guys, just to have the first aid kit up the top, easily accessible. It should be the last thing you pack. So you can get to it really quickly. Nothing worse than bleeding to death and having the first aid kit right at the bottom where you can't find it. So, oh, well, so hang on. What's this? A Linden Poskett grab handle? What's going on here? Where's the, what's the significance of that, eh? Oh, that's a very sentimental little piece to me. Um, Steve Hamilton, a world traveller, gave that to me. Uh, recently he finished his trip from the UK through to New Zealand because I'm going back the other way, he gave it to me to um, take back. So it will go on almost twice around the world. Hey Harold, Adam's put all his clothes in separate plastic bags. He doesn't know the secret of giant loop yet. Tripods, look at them. I love this new thing too with the, the little um, air, one way air valve so you can squash them down. Bloody brilliant, you're doing well. Adam's got a new Banana GPS, I'm not sure how that works. Don't there he goes, got his new, it's a new Garmin banana. <laughs> that hasn't had all the air taken out of it yet. You need to squash the sh That has far too much air in it. Squeeze the shit out of it. Keep going. Yeah, that's better. There you go. New suit, aim. New suit, the Climb Artemis. I picked it up yesterday from Steve from Adventure Moto. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, yeah, so this is the new ladies Artemis suit. Got all hip areas, so we've got a nice bit of extra room. I think it looks really flash too. It also matches it, my bike. It looks mighty flash. Excellent. Let's have a look. We've got lots of zips. You yep. go through some yeah, zip. let's you get go lots through of... the zips. So we've got yeah, some pockets, pockets up here. All uh, the zips are sealed too. For yeah, yeah, I saw that. We have pockets uh, here. Nice pockets. Okay. Where's your ventilation up top? Um, 
These ones? These ones here. Under the chest there. Oh, okay. Nice and handy, actually. Nice spot to have them. Yeah, that's um, good. And then you got some up the back. You got yours. Vents. Yep. Vents on your top arms. Yep. Vents on top arms and should have exhaust out the back as well. Yep. So, very functional. I'm mm. really looking forward to um, putting this through its paces. I mean, adventure, having good adventure rider gear is key to adventure riding. So, I think this is going to be a great, great addition to the adventure bike. You know, set of range for women. Because there's not a huge range out there for women. Um, getting stuff that fits us around the hips and around our um, upper legs is pretty important. So, exciting. One bike's out. There he goes, he's putting on that lovely soft jacket. That's nice fresh lines, man. It's not bad over my armor though, is it? No, it looks good. You'll be the most stylish rider on the ride, I reckon. Look at that. Adam Mitchinson. Model for Adventure Spec. I've been a factory rider for years in the sense I'm I actually work in a factory. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck my friend. I wish you the best. A good journey. I think you're gonna see some lovely parts of Australia. Yes, already. I'm impressed with that. I'm impressed with that bag. Yeah, it's a great little bag. No, oh, it's good. It's out of the road. You're light. You've definitely packed light. Yeah, that looks very tidy, doesn't it? The giant loop setup. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's excellent. They're away. <laughs>